in batteries. So the first speaker of today session is Professor Bernard Estrie. Bernard, many thanks for having accepted again our invitation after, after last year. Uh, it's a great honor having you here among us today. And uh, I'm sure you are going to share very, very exciting uh, scientific research with us today. Thank you very much, Bernard. Yes, OK. Hopefully, I do. I will do it. So thank you, Alejandro. Thank you also to your whole team for this uh, very nice organization and very nice uh, webinar. I really enjoyed all the talks. We have great, uh, great results. And it's um, very impressed by all the results that I get in the simulation field. So today, we'd like to give a talk, yes, uh, which is complementary to the talk given yesterday by Chao Liue Liu. Uh, here, why I would like to address the mechanical and chemical degradation of silicon-based electrodes and also uh, silicon graphite-based uh, electrodes, but from the uh, experimental point of view. So uh, next slide, please. Okay, so I will be very fast. You all know why uh, silicon is a hot material, a uh, hot topic, and also what are the, the challenges uh, to address to um, allow uh, <clears throat> silicon-based electrode to, to show a, a, um, a satisfactory cycling. So we have delamination of the electrode la layer and unstable ACI layer and pulverization of the silicon particles eventually. Next. So I would prefer to illustrate this starting with a video. Uh, you will show here to the surface of the silicon um, electrode during its first uh, cycles. Uh, we look through a glass slide. There is a hole in the separator and the hole in the counter electrode. And now we are reaching the first deliciation and you will you observe the, the, the formation of cracks when the silicon particles uh, deflate, contract, and during the, the following lithiation, we have the electrode expansion and a massive brutal delamination from the collector, uh, which illustrate well the, the, the mechanical failure of the electrode. So here I have to pinpoint that there is no pressure that is applied on the surface of the electrode for, for, the, for the sake of the, of the experiment, but that, that shows really the, the problem we have. Next. At the lower scale, these are images taken by um, uh, high-resolution electronic microscopy, transmission microscopy. On the uh, gray images, you see the, the initial uh, morphology of the silicon particles, which are uh, dense. And after 30 cycles, um, what we observed is that these particles are now nanoporous and stringy, which also shows that we have an irreversible evolution of the silicon particles. Um, at, the, at, at their scale. And the left image is a phase map um, obtained by electron energy loss spectroscopy that uh, illustrates the, 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 the chemical degradation that is occurring with, in green, some LIF uh, deposits, which are the results of the liquid electrolyte uh, degradation. We will see this again later. So next. So, with respect to many of these issues, it is well known that the binder is uh, very important. It has been shown that polycarboxylic acids show much better performance than the PVDF. You know that, first of all, because uh, these binders, like uh, in the middle, carboxymethyl cellulose or polyacrylic acid or arginate, they are able to interact more strongly through hydrogen or covalent bonds with the surface of silicon compared to PVDF. Next. And these binder, they also better preserve their mechanical strength when they are in contact with the electrolyte because PVDF is uh, on his side swollen by the electrolyte solvent and then becomes uh, very plastic, loses its um, elasticity. It is known also that the polycarboxylic acid binders are able to, to better perform as artificial SEI because they can more uniformly coat the surface of silicon, and thanks to the uh, carboxylic carboxylate groups, um, these groups afford this um, uh, binder layer with lithium ion transport properties, which uh, allow them to, to perform as artificial SEI. And finally, um, a recent study has shown that PVDF was chemically degraded when it is in contact with lithium silicide, which is not the case with lithium polyacrylate, for example 
which is the fourth reason or third reason for which fourth reason for which we usually show a much better cyclability with polycarboxylic acids compared to PVDF. Next. So now I would like to, to remind some uh, old work from our group uh, with respect to this binder, uh, mixed binder system, which is composed of carboxymethyl cellulose and citric acid. We found better performance with, when uh, citric acid was mixed with, uh, with CMC, and it will illustrate uh, some mechanical degradation phenomenon of the phenomena of the electrodes. Next. So on the left, these are old results, and they were uh, confirmed recently by Fabian Yeshul, uh, who also found that if you mix carboxymethyl cellulose, in fact, if you buffer the electrode slurry uh, at pH 3, thanks to citric acid or malic acid or glycolic acid, well, you have better uh, cyclability of the silicon-based uh, electrodes when they are prepared with the carboxymethyl cellulose uh, binder. Next. And we found on our side that uh, the electrode prepared in buffer pH-3 condition, so with citric acid in combination with carboxymethyl cellulose, they were showing higher strength in indentation measurements with a higher hardness, higher elastic modulus, and they were showing also uh, lower expansion as measured by electrochemical dilatometry compared to the electrode prepared at pH 7 with only carboxymethyl cellulose. We attributed this superior mechanical strength to specific interactions or reactions occurring at the interface between the silicon and the binder, that is to say, from the top to the, to the bottom, the grafting of the carboxymethyl cellulose or the grafting of the citric acid and ev also eventually some cross-linking of the CMC by citric acid. Next. And others, the group of Brett looked, they uh, found that uh, citric acid was uh, improving the ability of the binder system to perform as artificial SCI um, because uh, they, 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 they proposed that citric acid, that is a small molecule, can much more um, uh, uniformly coat the surface of silicon much more, with much more intimacy than the, than the polymeric uh, binders. Um, and, and they, they, they actually observed by infrared spectroscopy that an electrode prepared with citric acid was showing much less liquid electrolyte, uh, much less livium carbonate was found compared to the electrode prepared with polyacrylic acid. Next. So um, this study, um, which uh, was accomplished uh, by uh, Nathalie Delpuech dur during her PhD thesis is also a very interesting. It shows the influence of the surface chemistry of silicon and again of the interaction with the binder. On the, the, the plot on the, on the right, you see the cyclability of different silicon-based electrodes prepared, in fact, with silicon with dif different surface chemistry. You see the, the better cyclability in red of silicon A and on the plot, left plot, you have the chemical composition of the, of the surface of the silicon particles. You see that this silicon A is covered by a very well-defined silica layer, which is not the case of silicon U in blue in the middle, where there is only a suboxide with a, a low amount of, a, of oxygen at the, at the surface. But if you oxidized in air at high temperature, this silicon U, uh, it's the green uh, curve on, on the right, you see that you recover a very nice cyclability. So next, that shows that uh, if you, um, and, and, and the, 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 the plot on, on the bottom of the slide is the result of a diffuse reflectance infrared spectroscopy, where you see that, uh, which is very sensitive to interfaces and first allows to probe the interactions between the binder and the surface of the silicon particles, you see that there is clearly a very different pattern of interactions with this carbonyl peak at 1750, which we attribute to the uh, ester covalent bonds be between the silicon and the, the binder is much more intense for the two silicon uh, that are showing a good uh, cyclability. So this really highlights the importance of the interactions between the binder and the surface of silicon. Next. 
And then for this peculiar binder system, carboxymethyl cellulose and citric acid, we discovered a, a peculiar phenomenon, which we call the maturation process. It consists after the fabrication of the electrode, the first drying at room temperature next, to the exposure in the exposure of the electrode for a couple of days to humid air before the final drying at high temperature and the vacuum and the battery assembly next. And we observe that this maturation uh, really, really significantly improved the, the cyclability of silicon-based electrodes for the loading. You can see it at the bottom of the, of the slide, which is a, a, um, significant, that is to say, two milligrams of silicon per centimeter square. Next. So to convince you of this efficiency of the maturation process, I would like to show you another uh, video. Yes, you can start the video, please. You, you have to, 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 um, to stop the pointer laser. Yes. So again, we are going to look, uh, to, 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 to visual, to, to look at the surface of the, of the, of, of the, the electrode. This one, it's, it's the matured electrode uh, during the first cycles. And you will observe as for the standard electrode I showed you at the beginning of my presentation, the formation of cracks. The pattern is, however, of smaller islands. But what is uh, very uh, impressive is to see the, the very, um, that, that the cracks, they simply close and reopen in exactly at the same places, very reversibly. So that shows that the maturation, it increases the resiliency of the electrode towards the silicon volume variations. And this is very impressive, at least to me. So we made complementary experiments next um, by doing some X-ray computed uh, tomography observations, that's uh, Soleil and uh, ESRF. So you have on the, on the right, the plots in green, you see the potential, which is varying. Uh, during lithiation, delithiation, during the first cycle, you have the capacity that was obtained from the standard electrode and the matured electrode. Uh, for these fairly thick electrodes, we could obtain higher capacity from the matured electrode. You see 1,800 uh, compared to 1,300 for the for the standard electrode. And you have in, uh, in black and in blue, the volume variation of the electrode. And you see that even with a higher capacity, the volume variation of the matured electrode is lower, only 80% at full lithiation compared to 110% for the standard electrode. And after delithiation, the uh, irreversible volume variation of the electrode is lower, two times lower for the matured electrode. So this is maybe an explanation of the lower cracking or less irremediable cracking of the matured electrode. It, uh, it is that it has a lower volume expansion. Next. So complementary results from this uh, uh, tomography experiments, you are looking, looking here at the uh, plane, which is the interface between the electrode and the copper collector. So the images uh, on the first line is during the discharge, so the lithiation, and the second line is the delithiation, the charge. You, you have the standard electrode on the top and the matured electrode on the bottom, and the red zones are the zones, the area where the electrode is debonded from the current collector. So you see that thanks to maturation, there is less debonding from the current collector. And also you can uh, see that for the standard electrode, there is kind of breathing at the interface because during lithiation, the uh, area that is debonded increases and then it decreases uh, during the day lithiation. Next. And finally, uh, and you can play the video. Uh, you observe, you will observe here the crack, the, 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 the propagation of the crack through uh, the, the electrode volumes and where, what, where the, the newly formed cracks appear in red while the previously formed cracks uh, appear in white. It's during the first delithiation where you have the red dotted horizontal lines, which is showing you where we are uh, within the, the delithiation. So this clearly shows that maturation 
On one hand, decreases the delamination from the current collector, decreases the macro crack formation, and thus produce a more resilient electrode architecture. So why? So next, we made, of course, some chemical characterizations, and we realized that the uh, during maturation, the copper collector was uh, slightly corroded. You see the corrosion pits on the SEM image. Uh, right, uh, next, please. And we also found that uh, this uh, that copper could diffuse, uh, migrate inside the electrode. Uh, you have on the right the uh, the, uh, the quantification of the amount of copper in blue inside the electrode as a function of the maturation duration. So what is the phenomenon here? During maturation, the electrode is uh, hydrated. Uh, there is moisture inside the electrode and there is also acidity because we have the citric acid binder. And thus, uh, you know that below pH 4, the, the copper is corroded by organic acids or by any acids. But furthermore, because on top of this copper, we have an electrode that is hydrated because the binders, they are hygroscopic. They absorb water and they could form an hydrogel. We can totally imagine that copper can diffuse uh, inside the hydrogel, which is formed by the binder at the surface of the silicon particles. And then when we dry under vacuum at high temperature, water is removed, but uh, what remains is copper. Next. And we can have the cross-linking, the physical cross-linking through coordination bonds, copper carboxylates, of this binder phase, which is very likely at the origin of the uh, uh, mechanical uh, behave, me, um, better mechanical uh, properties of the matured electrode. Next, so we we obtain an evidence of, of this uh, process by simply. Uh, by doing this simple experiment, by adding some copper sulfate inside the electrode slurry and uh, simply drying this, this, uh, this slurry, not doing the maturation and measuring the electrochemical performance. Um, and you have the results here on the plot. So on, what is plotted is the capacity that is retained after 100 cycles, which is plotted as a function of the amount of copper, which is expressed as the molar ratio of copper to carboxylate. You see in black the standard electrode that there is a little bit of copper, likely due to uh, copper corrosion uh, during the, the first drying stage. In the red uh, square is for the matured electrode, higher amount of copper and higher capacity retention. And the blue, blue circles corresponds to the uh, standard electrode formulation in which copper sulfate was, uh, was added. You see the good that the uh, matured electrode is falling on the trend curve of the copper con containing uh, electrodes. So next, we attribute this, uh, 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 we think that uh, this performance improvement is could be attributed to the peculiar peculiarity of the coordination bonds that are flexible, labile, and reversible, and that probably, maybe, could afford the binder with some self-healing properties which would improve significantly the electrode resiliency to silicon volume variation. So next, this has opened up for us a nice field to explore. Uh, we are now trying to, to develop some coordination polymers to be to, um, uh, starting from different cations and organic ligands to behave as uh, binders or coatings for uh, silicon or alloying materials. Next. So now, it's time for the second part of our presentation, and now I would like to to, to disclose some new results we obtained uh, um, that who Jian Yang Xiong obtained during her uh, PhD uh, thesis. She defended it very recently, a month and a half ago, um, where she explored the mechanical chemical degradation of silicon graphite uh, electrodes prepared with a polyacrylic acid binder and also cycled in a peculiar electrolyte, which is ethylene carbonate free. Next. So again, the pH was a strong parameter of the study because uh, we know that um, the, the copper can be corroded at acidic pH. Next. While in neutral 
a condition we may have we have this silicon oxidation which uh, may release hydrogen which is which is very detrimental if you consider uh, industrial uh, industrial pilot fabrication lines next we have also we expect also depending on the ph different interactions between the binder and the silicon and in particular grafting in acidic conditions next we also expect different conformation of the polymer because in acidic conditions, due to hydrogen bondings, uh, the, we expect a collapse of the, of the chains. That means a low viscosity in the slurry, and that means also an heterogeneous um, uh, absorption or the formation of an heterogeneous layer of binder at the surface of the active particles. While in neutral condition, we expect that the chains are extended in solution, thus a higher viscosity, and, uh, and thus also a different pattern of uh, conformation of the surface of particles. And finally, next, it is known that the, uh, could you, yes, thank you. It is also known that during at the first cycle, the carboxylic functions are electrolytiated, which can also uh, play on the uh, economic efficiency of these electrodes. So next, we varied the pH, of the electrode slurry between 2.5 and 6, which corresponds to different neutralization degree of polyacrylic acid with uh, LiOH. Uh, next, um, the uh, amount of water, uh, Janan adjusted nicely the amount of water into the electrode slurry in order to have exactly the same uh, rheology for these slurries. And you see the influence of the polymer conformation in red, which is much more extended at pH 6. It was necessary to prepare the slurries with two times more water than at pH 2.5 to compensate for the different polymer conformation. By doing this, it was possible to obtain next um, electrodes with, uh, first of all, that were reproducible in terms of quality with high uh, with reproducible or in similar uh, active mass loading, uh, about 3.5 milligram per centimeter square. That means six to seven milliamps milliamp per hour per centimeter square. The electrode porosity in the table are fairly close, and also visually, uh, the, we, ha we 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 had um, a, a good distribution of the graphite and the silicon, which was uh, which were similar for all electrodes. So we believe that all of the, what, all the results we get, all the differences we observed for these uh, three electrodes could be attributed to the molar, molecular scale. That is to say, to differences in the chemical composition of the binder and also differences in the interactions with the particles, the active particles, and differences um, into, with respect to the interaction with the, with the electrolyte. Next. So first, we characterized the electrodes before cycling, and we, as expected, we observed that in acidic conditions, the uh, collector was corroded. At pH 6, the collector behind the electrode is looking like pristine, while at pH 4, you see the corrosion pits, and at pH 2.5, you see a glue-like deposit, which is revealing the strong corrosion that occurred. And by EDX, we also found that uh, a significant am amount of copper had uh, migrated, diffused, into the electrode prepared at pH 2.5. Next. Then we compared, next, the mechanical properties of the electrode by doing a scratch test. You measure the load necessary to remove a piece of electrode from the collector. Next. And as a result, we found that um, the electrode prepared in acidic conditions uh, showed, well, a stronger mechanical resistance to the, to the scratch test, as you see that the load necessary to remove a piece of electrode is more than two times uh, higher than for the electrode prepared at pH 6. The loads are shown in yellow. Next, so uh, we here are making only hypothesis, but we could attribute this superior mechanical strength to uh, electrodes prepared in acidic conditions uh, for several reasons. First, um, the binder are expected to, to, um, to be distributed with different conformation of the surface of the particles. In neutral condition, because the binder is extended into the solution, we expect that it is lying flat 
at the surface of the of the silicon particles and graphite particles and thus maybe not being able to extend more to stretch a lot in response to the to the uh, volume variation of the silicon particles while in acidic conditions it is expected to form deposits uh, with the chains more collapsed uh, more entangled and thus may be more able to extend to deform in response to the silicon volume variations also different intramolecular bonds are expected uh, weak ionic bonds in at ph6 while at lower ph we have hydrogen bonds and also at ph 2.5 uh, numerous coordination bonds and finally we also expect different bonding strength um, between the binder and the silicon particles weaker bonds at higher ph compared to uh, lower ph next so now we will look at the electrochemical uh, uh, performance yes so they were Let's look at the composition of the electrolyte on the top left. Left, So it is one molar LiPF6 in a blend of DMC, dimethyl carbonate, and fluoroethylene carbonate with 30% of fluoroethylene carbonate. So you see no ethylene carbonate here, no EC. The first, lithiation, uh, the first cycle lithiation capacity was the highest for the electrode at pH 4 and the lowest for the electrode prepared at pH 6. And the first but the fourth columbic efficiency was higher for the electrode prepared at pH 6 for two reasons. First, uh, again, because of different uh, polymer conformation at the surface of the silicon and uh, graphite particles. At pH 6, the binder is expected to uniformly cover the surface of silicon and thus really playing the role of artificial ICI layer, thus lower electrolyte degradation. And next, while contrary to the, if you look at the image on, on, on the left, we expect um, more direct contact between the surface of silicon or graphite and uh, the electrolyte in the case of polyacrylic acid, because it less homogeneously covers the surface of particles and thus we expect more liquid electrolyte degradation, which was uh, observed as a matter of fact by NMR. I will show you this later. Also, the efficiency, economic efficiency, is expected to be influenced by the electrolithiation of polyacrylic acid, which is much less at pH 6. Next. So now, if we look at the cyclability, you can see the blue curve. It shows uh, up to 50 cycles, approximately a better capacity retention compared to the two others. But after 100 cycles, all electrodes are showing the same capacity retention, about 60%, which is... Uh, uh, not bad. Next. So then we are we, we try to characterize the mechanical degradation or microstructural evolution of this electrode. And here are shown some SEM images after the first cycle. So you see there is nothing to compare with uh, pure silicon-based electrodes. Here the surface here ne is nearly intact. Um, what you can um, note is that the electrode prepared at pH 4 is uncracked, which is not the case for the electrodes prepared at pH 2.5 and 6. So peculiar behavior here. Next. And we made also some uh, interesting complementary observation by doing some sequential FIPSEM analysis. That was an idea of Victor Van Pien and Patrick Soci at INRS. They had the idea of, uh, with a FIB, focused on beam, uh, to, to, to dig a trench uh, to mill a trench inside the cavity at the surface of an electrode and then to assemble this electrode, to cycle this electrode, to deassemble and rinse this electrode and to observe by SEM the cavity. So to look at an electrode uh, exactly at the same place before and after cycling. Next. So you see on the, on the top of the slide, the images of the cavities, so the pristine electrode uh, with a zoom uh, behind the first cycle electrode, you see that there is a the, the, there is a deformation of the trench walls, and the, the 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 cavity after nine cycles, where you 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 can see that the the walls have collapsed inside the cavity. So it was necessary next to uh, to do some fine polishing at first cycle and more uh, uh, coarse polishing by fib uh, to 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 recover. Uh, a, a cross section that could be nicely visualized by SEM, and you can play. There is a video here 
which is uh, where we have recorded the milling procedure of a cycled electrode um, we, with the tracking of the position of some uh, selected particles. Okay, so now let's look at the results and move to the next slide. So you have plotted here on histograms the thickness, mass, and porosity variation. You can see that after the first cycle, the electrodes uh, morphology appears uh, badly changed because the thickness has increased by only 2% and the porosity has decreased by only 4%. If you look at the the position of the silicon particles, uh, they are nearly at the same place with the, an interparticle distance, which is uh, uh, unchanged from the zero, from the Christian to the first cycle electrode. And the graphite distribution also appeared nearly unchanged. After nine cycles, next, we saw that the electron maestro structure is a little bit more has a little bit more evolved. That is to say, the thickness has increased by 4% compared to the pristine electrode and the porosity decreased by 50%. What is much more significant next is the uh, morphological evolution of the electrode after 50 cycles. You see that the thickness has increased by 170%, which is huge, and the porosity decreased by 40%. And also, you can notice the very different morphological aspect of the silicon particles, initially dense. Now they look like sponge, sponges. They are nanoporous. And also you can note that the diameter has increased by a factor of two. So we attribute this uh, irreversible significant volume exp thickness expansion of the electrode to this irreversible morphological evolution of the silicon particles, which in fact, was uh, has been previously noticed by Wedge et al, and that we also observed by transmission electronic microscopy. I think it's uh, the next uh, slide. Yeah. Okay, so we did some uh, nice uh, stem ILS characterizations. ILS is for energy electron, energy electron loss spectroscopy. Uh, here I'm showing you only pictures, images from the pH4 electrode. So the first observation, which are uh, illustrated here, is that we observe a very nice, very good intimacy between the silicon and the graphite. Uh, even after 30 uh, or 100 cycles, you see here at the 40 cycles, the uh, nanosponge silicon, which is well adhered to the graphite slab. Next. What uh, with, um, with ILS, we did some chemical uh, mapping. Here are shown some phase maps uh, that were obtained thanks to reference spectra. And what was really spectacular for us is that the only materials we found for cycled electrodes was, of course, silicon and graphite. Also, the polyacrylate, the lithium polyacrylate binder, and the only liquid electrolyte degradation product we could find was lithium fluoride. We did not find any lithium carbonate or uh, uh, organo, uh, an organomaterial without, uh, without lithium, which is a very peculiar and likely could be attributed to the peculiar composition of electrolyte. Next. Here you have the, the, the image, the phase map for an electrode cycle, 30 cycles. So you see the, 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 the evolution of silicon particles with dense cores and some filaments that are uh, pushing from the cores. You see also, and for me, this is very impressive because I think this is the first time you can see it, the binder after cycling, after some cycles, it is still there, still cooling the surface of the silicon particles, still behaving as a binder, and also still behaving as an artificial pacification layer. And you see also in green, the lithium fluoride, which is either stuck to, to the binder layer or forming deposits uh, separated from, from, the, from, the, from the binder layer. Next. And here is the image of the 100 cycles where you see that uh, the continuation of the evolution of the silicon particles with again the binder and the LIF. Next. And also we looked at the position of the plasmon, which is the position of the, of the, of the peak maximum. And by the evolution, we could, we could, uh, we could say that uh, it appears that some lithium remain trapped in this electrode a little bit, 
very tiny amount after 30 cycles and a much more amount, much higher amount after 100 cycles, Li, Li 1.5 silicon one in this electron. Next. So to, 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 to complement this analysis, uh, we, we looked at the chemical degradation of the electrode by mass NMR. Here are shown some uh, lithium and fluorine uh, spectrum with the, the compounds that could be identified. Next. And here we have the qualification. Uh, on the right, you have the quality that was calculated thanks to the feeding of these spectra and also from uh, um, references, which were obtained by simply mixing non amount of LIF with silicon or graphite. So after one cycle, we can look at the, this first result. You see that the, 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 the major degradation project is LIF because the amount of fluorine uh, attributed to LIF that is found is equal or superior to the amount of lithium that is found on the uh, uh, lithium uh, mass and MR spectrum. So that, that is telling us that the, after one cycle, the only, very only liquid electrolyte degradation product is LIF. This is in, in, a, in a very, uh, this is very different from what we found during previous studies done on silicon based electrodes cycled in ECDMC or ECDMC FEC VC electrolytes, first electrolytes with FEC, where we found that the major liquid electrolyte products were lithium carbonate and organolithium. So after 30, 50, and 100 cycles, it is clear that the, the major liquid electrolyte degradation products remains LIF. There is a slight there is a difference, the, there is a higher amount of lithium compared to the amount of lithium brought by LIF, but we, we think we can attribute this, uh, this, uh, this difference to the amount of lithium that, that can be trapped inside the, inside the silicon particles. Next. So here is uh, finally something which is fairly interesting, is to look at the irreversible capacity loss. You have plotted the the, the cumulative values, which are uh, increasing all along cycling, and the instantaneous values uh, that were calculated at each cycle as the difference between the delithiation and the lithiation capacity. So, what is, it, what is obvious is that we have a, um, uh, a peak in the irreversible capacity loss uh, curve, next, which was already uh, pinpointed by Wedgen et al. And they attributed this peak to the uh, irreversible morphological evolution of the silicon particles because you start from dense particles and then you move to uh, filament NAUs, nanoporous particles, first particles with a much higher space specific surface and then um, much higher surface on which the electrolyte, electrolyte can degrade. So the occurrence of this irreversible capacity loss, because when the silicon particles have stopped to evolve, there is uh, less creation of new surface and first uh, less degradation of the electrolyte. What is significant or interesting to me, and that was reproducible, is to observe that for one of the electrode, the electrode, one of the electrode formulation, the electrode at pH four, this peak is delayed. Next. So why is it is it delayed? The silicon Evolution is um, intrinsic to the silicon. It depends on the on the capacity you can extract from the silicon. Clearly, so if we have a delay, it's because the polymer, the binder at pH three, is doing a better job as artificial passivating layer because it is protecting much better the surface of silicon. So why is it protecting better the surface of silicon? I don't know, but this is interesting. Next. Okay, and also another hint of evidence that this polymer is behaving differently is that after 30 cycles, the electrode at pH 4 is not cracked. While it is cracked, little t, some little cracks at pH 2.5 and 6, which means that this binder is uh, behaving differently. Next, I think it's time for conclusion. Yes, so numerous conclusions, I will read them. We found that the mechanisms of degradation in silicon-based electrodes are both mechanical and chemical, and they occur at different scales of the electrode, the electrode film and the electrode particles. 
Uh, these mechanism, degradation mechanisms are the cracking and delamination of the electrodes, some irreversible morphological evolution of silicon from dense to porous and stringy particles, and also, of course, the degradation of the electrolyte and the trapping of lithium. We saw that the mechanical degradation mechanisms are greatly reduced when silicon is mixed with graphite, and that these mechanisms are significantly influenced by the formulation of the electrode, in particular the composition, the chemical composition of the binder and its interaction with the silicon surfaces. And what is also still fascinating to me is that very subtle changes in the binder composition, such for example here as the carboxylates, carboxylic acid ratio, can have significant effects uh, which can be related to the differences in conformation and interaction with the silicon surface. Next. Yeah, and so here, uh, as far as I know, we've been able to see for the first time the binder after some cycles, because fortunately, the only liquid electrolyte degradation product was LIF, thus the organic matter we saw was the binder and it was lithiated. So it continued to play its role of binder and the flexible artificial passivation SEI through the cycling. That is a significant result, I guess. Before it was speculated, I think we are showing it there. And we saw now if we turn to the formulation of the electrolyte, of course, it was known that it has a significant effect on the chemical degradation. And that here that the selection of an electrolyte without ethylene carbonate and rich in fluoroethylene carbonate was relevant. And I would like to, to mention that we also found good results for uh, cyclability in full cells with an MC532 electrodes. Now to finish, I would like to, to really sincerely acknowledge my co-workers. It's the next slide. So Lionel Rouet, Victor Van Pien, Patrick Soucy, Philippe Moreau, Nicolas Dupré, Thomas De Vic, and Jen Anne Siong. She really did a very nice a PhD thesis, and I uh, simply would like to say that she's looking for a job after well-deserved holidays, and she has all my support. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bernard, for this wonderful talk. Very inspiring for people like us doing models, right, on this system. Mm -hmm. And as you are totally right, I mean, the system is complicated, it's complex. So thank you very much, Bernard. You're welcome. So, Fernando, let's move to, to questions. Uh, we cannot hear you, Fernando. Well, anyway, I, I can take uh, why you solve this technical issue, so I can take care of the questions, OK? So, OK, so thank you, Professor Bernard, for the excellent presentation. I want to ask, uh, maybe I missed that, what do you think about the function of carbon coating for silicon particles in the mechanics aspect? OK, in the mechanic aspects. So. Um, I don't know if this, uh, if well, uh, likely it depends on the amount of carbon you have and on the amount of, of, uh, of silicon. Um, I don't know if the carbon is able to, to stick to the surface of silicon when silicon expand. So I don't know if it's useful to have the carbon coating on the surface of, uh, of silicon. And of course, if you want to have a good adhesion, maybe you have to change your binder because uh, not sure carboxylic acid binders can strongly bond to to carbon okay so new question is uh, thank you for the great talk could the benefits of the maturation process be achieved by artificially adding water to the slurry to shorten the electro preparation times or are there other processes involved in the exposure to moist air that result in the improved electrode properties? So in fact, uh, the electrode slurries are prepared with water. So we have water, but it yeah. seems that we need this slow corrosion process to allow for copper diffusion. Um, but in fact, you finally, it seems that we could obtain the same performance improvement by simply adding copper or other coordinating cations inside the electrode slurry. Mm -hmm. okay. Good. Fernando, are you back? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, now perfectly. Maybe you can take ah, over perfect. all the questions if you want. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes. Uh, OK, so yeah, the next question questions. that we have is from, <laughs> yeah, we have from Hassan Olarvi who asks, 
Uh, Professor Bernard, for this very interesting lecture, could you comment on the particle size of the silicon you used? Okay, so so this silicon is prepared by Lionel Rouet by uh, by milling. So in the end, we have a micrometric particles, but that are nanostructure. That is to say, they are made of nano nano nanoparticles, uh, twenty to 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 one hundred micro uh, nanometers. Uh, so when we do we process all slurry, these micrometric particles are broken down into smaller smaller particles. We can we can have an an, an ID by looking at the uh, uh, TEM images, but they are typically one hundred to to, to 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 one micrometer uh, uh, thick. Okay, thank you. Then uh, Hassan has a follow up. And he asks, have you also studied the effect of this particle size distribution on the theriological properties and on the binder silicon interactions for composite and non-composite electrodes? Oh, of course. So we saw that you need to adjust the amount of binder when you when you go to, to uh, lower particle size. Okay. And then also another question from Hassan. He asks, uh, have you also studied the effect of? I ah, know this is the same. See, question the same. Uh, yeah. 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 So here we have a question from Theo Lombardo who asks, "I am curious, and I hope I did not miss that. But to what do you associate the mass variation along cycling you showed in slide 23?" Okay. So so here I have to say that these electrodes were not cycled with their EC3 electrolyte. So it was a classical LP30 electrolyte with the, with the, but with a 10% AFC added. So the electrodes were deassembled in the glove box and weighted in the in the in the glove box. So this uh, mass uptake is expected to come from the liquid electrolyte degradation precipitation. So here not only LIF but also lithium carbonate carbonate likely. Thank you. Okay, great. So I think, uh, well, don't hesitate to ask uh, questions. I mean, for, to the, audi uh, the audience, I mean, to ask questions to Professor Bernard Lestrier. Uh, I think uh, Bernard, you will be happy to answer also in the chat, right? Yeah. Some more okay. questions comes. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much once again for a great, uh, great talk, Bernard, and for having accepted again the, the invitation.